So we made a boo-boo this week. Hi guys, welcome to Make It. I'm Dave, for those of you that don't know me, and today we're trying to get a head round an LT1 coupled up to a six-speed Tremec manual. So this is Project Mamba. If you look at these next shots, when this car came to us, it was in a very, very, very bad way. Chassis was rotten, axles were rotten, the brakes were rotten. It was actually delivered here with a bottom end. I think it had been to a fellow workshop, I think it was a thatch barn. Um, it had been diagnosed, catastrophic engine failure, sat down there for a couple of years, I believe. The interior was absolutely disgusting. There was actually gro the growth, like it looked like a hedge growing from the ceiling in mould. So, Tom, the owner of this, touched base with myself, and we went through all the options and what I can offer him. So we decided to go with new axles, new chassis, Marsland, of course, and go with an LT1. Tom wants to put a supercharger on this eventually, so we had a few niggles with sourcing a clutch that can actually take the power. So we put a heavy duty clutch wire in there, and all the shiny bells and whistles, as per usual. But the issue we've got now is this direct port injection engine needs a speed signal from the gearbox and the guys that make the billet adapter for us to go on the back of the Tremec are normally designed for the LS3, which the LS3 doesn't need a speed signal from the gearbox because it just doesn't. This having the later ECU for the port injection, fuel management, and PW and controller, it needs to see what the, basically the gearbox speed is. So we came up with, if you look at this next shot, this billet um, speed sensor that goes on the back of the LT230 to pick up the gearbox output speed, basically. Anyway, now we've got to get that data into the later ECU, which is what we've been doing here. Today we've been playing about with um, signals and figuring out um, pulse widths, all that kind of thing. And we're finally getting there. So the next stage is to give our tuning guy a call and get it booked in and hopefully get it back to Tom because I know he's super eager to have his car back. So we made a boo-boo this week. So my paint guys, the suppliers, I sent them a photo of the can and I told them that I needed the sand color and I got that. But I think they thought that I was probably doing a Camel Trophy maybe revamp, which is what presuming gets you, isn't it? So that arrived and Darren came to me and went, Dave, I think this is the wrong color. I went, it might dry differently. And then it didn't. So. It's going to get another coat of paint, but John loved repairing that. So we bought these panels from America and we pieced the panels in and we got rid of all the horrible filler, all the horrible rust and Project Fifi will live another 20 years. happening in the booth today so in the booth today we have got the little willy jeep out as that has had a little bit of paint put on it which is in the workshop because it's nice and dry now um, we have bought in the raptor 90 murray's 90 so we're gonna finish off painting the raptor the white so as you can see just in the process of bagging it up at the minute then gonna get it on the ramp bag around the wheels to make sure no overspray gets on the wheels so it just means then we can get the paint on let it dry and then we can do the likes of finishing it off then just getting in lights and and uh yeah just the last last few bits on it really because i believe 
Darren's finished wiring it up. So yeah, it's just uh, just part of getting it painted and put it back together and then you can be a happy chappy. The front, we've seen that painted already, haven't we? So it's just the tail end of it. That's it, downside. yeah. So it's just got, just got the rear quarters to do in the back. So got to give it a little rub down, make sure it's all nice and clean. However, the Raptor will, it will stick on top of this Raptor because it's not like smooth. It's not like a smooth paint job because it's already rough. It will stick, um, but it's like, for example, on here, where his wheel carrier's been, we'll give that a sand down, get, get any rough spots out of it, get the rust off. And yeah, we'll give it a good wipe down and uh, hit it with a bit of paint. What's happening there? Uh, well, we've got another farm truck. I'm just washing the underneath, getting rid of all the crap. And then uh, we'll be having a new chassis, new shocks, new uh, new springs and everything. So it's going to be a nice, smooth ride. And it's probably having going to have a, a lot of new things, to be honest. But we're just going to have to wash it, lift up in the ramp, have a look what it needs, and then we're going to go from there. <laughs> So this scruffy little TD5 90 has come into us for a uh, chassis treatment. Jacob introduced it earlier, he thought it was having a new chassis and I caught them before undoing things that I thought, why are they doing that? And I'm lucky I caught them and I'm glad I'm here today because I think the body would be off by now. So that's apprentices for you. But it's gonna have full blast treatment underneath, new brackets as and where we can replace them, galvanized components where they can replace them. And if you look over here, this is the project last week that we fitted the mayor chassis to. So we've given it a nice galvanized bumper. We've given it only brake lines, our Bill Stein shocks. They are a great upgrade guys and a really good value for money, I want to say.
How are we looking on this roof, Pete? Roof's just about done now, mate. Um, sorting the trim out for both sides, with it being cut and shut, and making a new piece for each side instead of joining the old stuff. Um, then it's on to the back, cutting that next. So what are you doing on the back? The main tub will be having a big chunk of this area cut out of it to compensate for what we've added to the cab. So these are Project's precious axles. So you'll notice the beautiful little AP calipers and the vented discs. So we came up with a solution to fit inside stock wheels and Jason owns this car, wanted to keep his original wheels, which are this big. So we had to come up with a brake kit that fits inside the wheels. That's the rear axle there. We've gone with Nigel from Mega Squirt, XS 4x4. That's his bracing kit. And what we're actually doing there, we're putting a heavy duty um, rear diff. So this is heavy duty crown wheel and pinion. Pegs, as you can see the, the bolts there. These are all built by Nigel. These are his, I think he calls them super diff. So you see the seal here. He's really gone and over-engineered over the hell out of these diffs, which is a cracking thing. Anyway, we fitted those there. 16-inch brake kit. These are the latest calipers on the market, I believe. Um, we touched base with Luke at LOF, and he helped us out because we couldn't actually, at the time, we were running low on some of our brake kits. So I gave Luke a call, and he helped me out with the kit. So shout out to Luke at LOF there. And the other bit you'll see is this here, this air fitting. So those of you in the trade will know what this is. So this is an ARB fitting. So this pumps air inside this diff, which then locks it, allowing permanent locking. So if you see there, you'll notice that they're running the same way. If we go this way, they run that way. So ARBs are renowned for being, you know, one of the strongest diffs out there. And when air is pumped into this, they lock. The collars lock inside and it allows for 100% traction. So when you're in the sloppy stuff, Jason wants to use this car for overlanding, expeditions, you name it, and that's what we're giving him. Okay, Andy, what are we working on today? Uh, we're working on a set of um, defender seats. Um, so we're doing two fronts and then the, the rears, a double seat and a single seat. So we've got a full set in the distress ladders. Um, not for particularly any job, but it'll be anybody wants them. So the sort of thing we can do, we can do you the full set in whatever leather you want really. This is in the distressed leather, which looks very good and suits the Defender really. Uh, so what's this piece you've been putting together here? Um, this is a base. So we started off, um, got the original cover. So the original cover has been taken off, separated, marked up. So as we've got some witness marks, some marry marks. And then instead of having the solid piece around the front, we've put a piece in so marked it so as it looks similar design so as it comes in and then we can sew up so that gives us a, a finished piece like that with the twin needle stitching do a contrasting stitching on it and then gives it a bit of design a bit more style to it than the standard seats so, and this one, we're doing a fluted centre panel where we can do any style you want really. 
either the diamond stitching, the quilting, or this is more the traditional style fluting. Um, yeah, which I think it'll look good for the style, the style of the Defender is. John, what are you doing under this car here? Good morning. Well, what I'm doing today is fitting a, a brand new exhaust from scratch, starting from the manifold all the way down to the back box. Uh, and at the moment, I'm just trying to figure out, <coughs> I've done the one, one side, I'm just trying to figure out the bends so I can attach it to this side and then move my way back to the back box on the other side because there's two silences on this uh, vehicle. We've got the main one here and then we've got a little cigar one that's going to be, I don't know if you can see it from there, it's going to be about there and then the rest of the tailpipe and everything else is going to be like that. I know it's looking crude but that's the sort of uh, thing we're going to be looking at. So, so, yeah. what's, so what's the purpose of this second silencer? It's just to dampen the noise. The customer wants it quite, quite quiet. So this, this one would normally be ample, but we stick this one on the end just to dull the noise a little bit more, make it a bit more sweeter. The more reserved. Yeah, finish. pretty much, yeah. So it doesn't sound like a, like a raging tank going up the road, which I, I think really spoils the aesthetics of, a, of what you've got up front. Um, but yeah, everyone's, everyone's different, everyone wants their preferences. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So Project Mon Minter, so Murray delivered the doors to us last week, I think he's gone with some, I think an SP 4x4, the new doors from scratch, and he said to me, he said, Dave, well you've got it there, could you just blow it over a bit more Raptor, so that's exactly what Darren and Ed have done today, they've prepped all the panels, and they've made it white again, so we've taken this old 300 TDI and revamped a lot of love back into it. Commonly known as a pie cut. I'm struggling to get the uh, the angles I need to come from this the strap here up and over and on this pipe. So uh, 
my mate over there, Pete, has suggested using pie cuts. And naive as I am, I've never used pie cuts before. So... Everyone likes a bit of pie. Oh, everyone likes a bit of pie. Yeah, so... Um, and it's a lot more accurate. Because um, you can sort of spin them. And get the angle you need, spin each half. So I've got four or five of these. So hopefully now, <coughs> I should be able to just spin, turn, spin, turn, and get to where I need to, which is here. So, yeah, I feel like an apprentice all over again. Spin each section round to whatever angle you need. So that's it for another week at Maker. Thanks again for watching guys and please like and subscribe and help me share it guys. So we're growing slowly. What was that? So we're, we're growing slowly. Anyway, thanks again. See you next week. Bye bye.